Welcome to the She Force Show. I'm your host, Amy Carlson. Today, I'm doing a solo on the idea of asking, receiving, and reciprocal energy. If you are like me, you perhaps have had a struggle in allowing yourself to ask. Ask for help. Ask for what you want. Ask for support. Any form of asking has been difficult for me. I have taken on this idea that I am so independent that I need no help. (laughs) Of course, over time, that really isn't the truth. It really isn't how I want to go through the world. And I have been actively, uncomfortably cultivating the a, a way for myself, a path for myself to be more comfortable with asking. As you know, having been on the receiving end of an ask, it feels so good. It feels so good to have clarity about how you can help. It also feels good to have clarity so that you know, can you help? Because sometimes you may have been asked to help with something that isn't within your capacity. And of course, it's okay to say no. But when our friends and loved ones come to us with something very clear about how we can be supportive, That is the best. Even thinking of it in the simplest terms, if you're invited to a potluck, think of the difference between someone saying, you're invited to a potluck, bring what you want. Okay, that allows for a lot of choice, but also overwhelm. Or if someone says, I'd love to have you come to the potluck, could you please bring a dessert? Suddenly, it gets so much more clear so quickly. Your mind comes up with an idea. You know what to bring. You know you will be of service because you are bringing what they asked for. So this idea of asking goes along with receiving. Sometimes we can be uncomfortable with both, both asking and receiving. So I've got three steps to help you clarify. These are the steps that I, on a regular basis, work through myself as I develop this muscle of being able to ask, and then at the same time, develop the muscle of being able to receive, kind of like uh, I use a lot of health analogies because that's part of my background. But when you think of the two muscles, the bicep and the tricep, and how they work together, That's how I think of asking and receiving as well. One is being the stabilizer while the other one is mobilizing. And same idea with asking and receiving. So step number one, you need to get clear on what it is you want. Here's how I find myself sometimes going round and round before I really understand that I need some support. I may find myself going in circles. I may find myself dragging my feet. I may find myself overwhelmed. That's the signal to me that there's something standing in the way, either something that I can't do 100% on my own or something that I'm not ready for. So if it is that I need help. Step number one is I need to get clear on what I need help with. So that could be something like when we converted um, our shed into my office, the space that you see now. It took me a while to actually come up with what it was I was looking for. My Previous 
and still sometimes go to is this kind of wishy-washy sort of read between the lines communication, especially with my family. And so it took a while for me to get to the point. The point was I needed a space where I didn't feel like I was asking unfair things of my family. For example, during the middle of the day, when somebody's coming home and um, making noise within the house, which they should be able to do, and perhaps I'm recording a podcast or on a Zoom call, I needed to be able to clearly say to them, I need a space where I can do my work and not be interrupted and also not interrupt you. So once I was able to articulate that, then they could start brainstorming and coming up with ideas. And the next thing was my son and my husband both said, how about the shed? We could convert the shed to an office. Step number one, get clear on what you need help with. You can also get clear on why you want it. Because sometimes just in your own mind, you need that information. You don't always have to give that information to other people, but the logical mind wants to know why. And that helps you sort of form a strong resolve around it as well. Step number two, after you've gotten clear on what you want, is who could help? What could help? So maybe somebody comes to mind right away. Ah, I need to ask that person. Or maybe you want to brainstorm first to come up with a list. Maybe it's not a person that you need. Maybe it is a service that you need, information that you need. So step number two, who, what, could be supportive. And then step number three is ask. Now, this tends to be the step that I need the most preparation on. Sometimes I have to get my words together. Sometimes I have to calm my nervous system before I ask. Sometimes I have to go around in my head a little bit to question myself. Do I really need this thing? This is, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm new to this. So it's still the phase and the stage that I'm in that I go through this little dance. Like, are you sure? Is this really what you want? Even some of the stuff about worthiness and deserving can come up. So don't be surprised if that happens to you. So step number three is the step that I often spend the most time in. Do a little inner work around. And then when I feel solid in what I want and who, what can help me get there. Sometimes I strike a power pose. Sometimes I do a practice run of asking for what I want. And then as clearly and concisely as possible, just ask. I have found the fewer the words that I use, the better. In the past, I always wanted to explain myself, give all these reasons about why I needed it and give some excuses about this and that. And none of that is necessary. And it just makes you wobble. So stand firm. I have found standing helps, even if you're on the phone, stand when you ask. Do your power pose if you want to. Say it directly. Put it in one sentence. And then wait. And you will get an answer. From there, once you've done those three steps, you can put timelines together. You can figure out the next actionable steps. But I have found these three things to be the most helpful to me. To practice asking, receiving, 
and getting into what is called reciprocal energy. Most of us want to know how we can support one another and exchange our energy and our gifts and our skills and our appreciation. So if you still find yourself having trouble asking, receiving, remember that if you don't ask, you can actually stop someone else from, from giving of themselves. And when it, it's put to us that way, we never want to stop someone from sharing their own gifts, from being delighted to help. So to quickly recap, in this art of asking and receiving, step number one, get clear. What is it you want? If your mind wants to ask as well, why do I want it? Step number two, who, what can help support me? Make a list or come up with that person or that, that phone number that you need to call. And then practice. Practice asking. Ask in front of the mirror. Go in your power pose. Write about it. Whatever's helpful. Ask directly and concisely and then wait for the response. I should add a step number four here. Celebrate, celebrate yourself that you've done it, that you are working through something that can be very uncomfortable and yet an amazing, amazing skill. The people that I admire, and you may look at this in your own life, are people who know how to ask. They are people that don't think they're going to get through this world and experience all of the success in whatever ways are meaningful to you by themselves. So your assignment, if you should choose to accept it, is to practice the art of asking and receiving. Thanks so much for joining the show today. I look forward to interacting with you on Facebook, on Instagram, or in any of my upcoming courses, programs, or retreats. If you have any questions, just reach out to us here at SheForce. We're always delighted to hear from you. Thanks for stopping in today. Until next time.